we spent a lot of time yesterday and part of today talking about Simone Biles. Took herself out of the team competition. She has taken herself out of the individual all-around competition. That will be Thursday. Don't know if she's going to compete over the weekend. And we thought about Dale Jr. Um, for a variety of reasons. We love having Jr. on. By the way, season two of Lost Speedways on Peacock. They're looking at uh, great racing cathedrals of the past. Really long forgotten race courses now abandoned or overtaken by nature. I really loved it. thought it was great. And we were going to have Junior on to talk about that. But then I thought everything that he went through when he was racing from when his dad died to getting in the car the next week, the expectations, you inherited a fan base. He wasn't winning. Just the mental side of that. And uh, Dale Jr. joins us now. And I know it's a long time ago, but that, that mental part of preparing for a race, how many times do you think you went into a race where mentally you weren't in a good place? Well, when you're doing it every single week, you certainly had your good days and bad days when you, you know, you could tell where you were last week mentally and where you were this week. And it was happening in such a repetitive um, you know, process that you, you know, it, there were days when you got up and you felt really great. You felt like, man, I'm, I'm, this is going to be a great day. I can feel it. Or, you know, you just, you had a, a great disposition and, and could handle adversity better. And then there were days when you got up out of bed and you had no motivation or you had no confidence. Um, you maybe had something going on in your personal life that was that had you down and dis depressed. Um, and then when you were faced with any adversity during that day or that race, you didn't handle it well and you didn't overcome it. And, you know, you kind of you kind of fell apart. Um, I had. Yeah, you, you're definitely going to experience that in sports um, when you're when you're competing on a regular basis. You're going to have those days when you mentally just have it together and then those moments when there's just you just seeing you're just overwhelmed and uh i was always affected you know my personal life and my home life um was uh you know the driving factor for me and so if things were good and i you know i was and things were smooth for me at home uh Things were going. Things were going to go pretty well at the racetrack. I think that might have been the other way around too. Sometimes, if things didn't go well at the racetrack, <laughs> things went bad at home. Um, that, that's for sure. If if I failed, and I had stretches of failure, you know, where just I was a miserable, miserable person every day of the week. But how many times uh, did you get into a car and say I shouldn't be in this car? I uh, never, never did that. I just. I was, it was a job, you know, I was just uh, showing up to work and supposed to be there, felt like I belonged there, but there were days when you looked around and you just knew you didn't have that same confidence as the guy next to you. So when we go to the driver's introduction, all the drivers are forced into this little space together and we're going to get introduced to the crowd. And so you are exposed to all the comp competition right there in that moment before you're going to go compete. And you can see guys that are, that are that are um, ready to get ready to get after it. And you can see guys that are just, you know, they're they're not up on the chip. They're not fired up to be there. I don't know. Everybody kind of approaches it differently. But um, can you say anything to anybody? What do you mean? Like, could you tell your crew chief? Or, like, you have doubts, or hey, I'm just not there, or like, do you have to? Did you just suppress it? Yeah, you wouldn't want to say that because you don't want your team to hear it or you didn't want your crew chief or anybody to think that you weren't you weren't logged in, you know, and you weren't there. Everybody uh you know, every most with the most sports racing is a is a team effort and nobody you definitely uh don't want you know, your personal issues or anything you got going on, I guess, were you didn't, you know, that what that wasn't the Jackman's problem. That you know that <laughs> He showed up. He's there. He's he's plugged in. He's prepared all week, um, and so you suppressed it and didn't say anything. Now after the race, you might go up to your crew chief and say, "Hey, man, I'm sorry. As you could probably tell, I wasn't I wasn't with it this week, or I wasn't with it today. Um, this is why. I'm going to try to fix that. How can you help me fix that? Uh, and 
you know, you, you try to you try to do a better job the next week. But you had a big fan base. Did like the pressure at a young age of living up to what they wanted. The other drivers didn't have that. You can say that's good and bad, but yeah. like you had to, you didn't want to let them down. No, you didn't. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had a hard time feel. I had a hard time feeling like a victim there because I, I felt like that that fan base was super, uh, that fan base was absolutely the reason why I was able to keep my job in certain situations when probably the next guy would have got fired. There was a stretch when I was going uh, pretty, things were going pretty bad with my job at Rick Hendrick. Uh, and I, I, you know, anyone else would have got let go, but my fan base and the support that I had from the fans is the reason why I wasn't let go. And so, you know, being the most popular driver, um, that, that saved my butt a few times in my career and, you know, and I was able to turn it around and get back to victory lane, do all that. But, um, I was, uh, so I, you know, knowing that it was this blessing, um, I could, I, I always, I kind of felt guilty to ever look at the, you know, that pressure as a bad thing or, or something that I didn't want to have, um, because that, you know, that support from those fans was the same thing that was keeping me going and keeping my, literally keeping me in the seat uh, at certain, certain points in my career. You didn't ever think about just pulling in pit row and then just getting out of the car and just walking away? No. Uh, I mean, certainly may, may have, uh, <laughs> certainly may have thought about it a time or two. <laughs> I mean, there was some, uh, I tell you, I mean, to be quite honest, Dan, I, when we went to, Rockingham after dad died. I mean, I didn't want to, I didn't want to run that race. Um, I, I, I didn't want to be at home by myself either. You know, I wanted to be at the racetrack and I wanted something to occupy my mind, but. And that's a week after your father died. Yeah. So he died. And then next weekend we're at Rockingham and I didn't want to be home, not racing. I probably, that probably would have been a, a miserable realization when they drop the green flag and you're not out there. Um, like, oh, this was a bad idea. I should have been in that race, but I certainly didn't. I, wa I wasn't getting up that morning going, man, I, I'm looking forward to this. Um, I just needed to be at the track. I really didn't want to be behind the wheel. Um, but, I mean, it was, it was, uh, you know, the next couple of weeks down the road that, 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 that emotion goes away. And there were certain times in, in the, uh, in the, you know, in the droughts of, in the windless droughts and, and the struggles when I would walk, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I wouldn't really say it. I wouldn't really feel it on race day. You know, every day you get up and get in the car, you're thinking this is the day it could turn around. If I get in this car, this might be the day it goes right. But on Monday after it didn't go right, I'd walk into the office and uh, talk to my sister or somebody and say, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. It's, this is not fun. I'm not having any fun. I don't want to do this anymore. And, but the machine was so big it was going right i can't stop it There's, you were you were a brand i was right you can't just you can't just i couldn't stop it right even if i wanted to stop it i couldn't get off that train and too many moving parts uh and it's probably best you know that i didn't have that choice i, I it's probably best i didn't have control um you know of that decision because i i, I would have probably made the wrong decision in that moment but uh, it was Whatever, I'm, I'm glad I stuck it out, you know, because I did get back to, to winning some races and was able to kind of have some great moments. Sorry I got a little heavy with you. but Yeah, it really got heavy. Right <laughs> <I'm out of laughs> <you. laughs> Your dad would have been 70 in April. My gosh, yeah. What, what would he be doing? I, You know, I hope that he would be spending a lot of time with my wife and my kids and uh, cause I feel like that he would have really loved Amy. And um, I just really wish that I could have seen them to interact with each other um, over, over lunch or whatever, you know, and certainly wish that I could watch him, um, you know, play with my kids. And, and uh, so I imagine he would be doing all those things. I don't know what he'd be doing 
professionally and 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 what he might have his involvement in probably his car dealership or or I don't know whether he would still be a team owner in NASCAR probably so he'd probably have some some pretty big influential position in NASCAR whether it's on the ownership side or in the industry itself or you know managing uh, the direction of the sport but um at 70 years old, I'd hope that he would be slowing down and enter, in, enjoying the family that he's got, you know, all his grandkids. He wouldn't be on a dirt track on a Saturday night, would he? No, no, he wouldn't. He would left that way behind in the 70s when he moved up into the Cup Series. I don't think he would ever – he might have done a one-off here and there to, to entertain some folks, but uh, he – I think once he was going to be finished with racing in the Cup Series that he would probably be done for good. The uh, season two of Lost Speedways on Peacock, as you uh, look back on you know, some of these long-forgotten race courses, abandoned or overtaken by nature, and I watched one a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was great. I just, you're like the Anthony Bourdain of racetracks. Oh, man. You just, That's a great compliment. You, and yes, and I want you to take it that way. You, you're... You're not a NASCAR driver, former NASCAR driver. I mean, you're you're a good host, and 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 you you present it in a way that you're truly excited about what you find, what you discover, what you unearth. I mean, it's archaeological digs uh, that we're finding with these racetracks, and I, I it, it's enjoyable. It's you don't have to be a NASCAR fan. It's no. just about history. You're talking about people and, and places, and it's uh, yeah. it's really well done. Well, thank you. There's a um, it's. We, we produce it at Dirty Mo Media, which is a business that, that uh, we started here, a production company that we created. And uh, we, um, there is a, there's an interest um, in all of us with the abandoned and the, you know, things that are lost or left behind to be discovered again. It, it, it we are all sort of interested um, in those things. And I know it's, a, it's, I get, uh, people laugh when I use this analogy, but I remember when they were looking for the Titanic for years and, and they were never going to find it. It was, a, it was an, an impossible task to discover where this thing was at. And they looked for it for, uh, decades. And finally, you know, when they found it, uh, I remember when I was a kid and seeing the images of this thing and, I mean, it just evokes so much interest and curious. We were all curious. Heck, we're still curious about that discovery. And um, so there, there's a, it's sort of the same thing, you know, but it's in my little world of racing where we go back to these tracks and we only go to the places where there's evidence, where you can actually see what the track looked like or the imprint of the track in the, into the surface of the ground. And um, it's fun to really understand what they meant to those communities, the people that experienced the good times and, the, and when the tracks were thriving. Um, and I'm not saying this because we're here together, but, um, if I get any credit on my hosting abilities or anything that I do on, on my interviewing abilities, I have studied you, buddy. Uh, you're one of the best. Uh, I've told you that before. And, um, I tell everybody that, you know, when I'm working in, in the media side and, and broadcasting and so forth, that, you're kind of the top of the mountain in terms of how to interview somebody and uh, you just do an amazing job. And so uh, I have to say that. Um, and I'll probably tell you that many, many more times going up, going forward every time we're around each other, but I really appreciate you and, and, and uh, the influence that you've kind of had on me as I've, if I've steered away from driving cars and gotten into uh, the broadcasting side of it, it's been, you, you know, you've been a really helpful uh, person and a very supportive person to me. And you probably don't even know that. Well, you know what I always appreciated about you, Junior, is you were willing to listen. You didn't have all the answers. And, and, and I think that that's, that's the important part when you're trying to go into this business is you don't know, but you're willing to listen and find out. And, uh, and I always appreciated that. But, uh, okay. you know, uh, it's always great to catch up with you. I, yes, sir, you I, I feel like I'm talking to you, not interviewing you. And uh, uh, I, I appreciate your honesty always. Yep, it's always good to talk to you too, man. And I feel the same way. Every time we've had a conversation, it, it, you almost forget we're, we're working. But uh, um, And if I can help with the girls, I'll help. You know, you let me know. <laughs> like, I, I got you, three of them. I know. You're always available, man. I know I can text you anytime I, I, I need with that type of question. I, I still love, like, Junior will send me a text, and it'll be like, you know, what do I do? Like, you know, <laughs> I got it. I didn't know that they could do this, or, you know, she's asking yeah. me this, and... 
I, I think you got to do a show on fatherhood. Would would Amy do a reality show on fatherhood? Hmm, I don't know. She might. It'd be it'd be an interesting experience. I'm sure. She's the crew chief. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, with two girls, uh, with two little girls, absolutely. She's she's in control, uh, and I'm on the. I'm just. I'm there to to help. I'm I'm a I'm another set of hands to sort you're of. You're just changing lug nuts. That's all you're I doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a big crew at this point. Good luck with the show. Always great to talk to you, Junior. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Take Good care. To talk to you, buddy. Dale Junior. NASCAR and NBC analyst, and it's season two of Lost Speedways. You'll find that on Peacock. I don't know how the relationship started, but I just remember talking to him, and it felt like we were having a conversation. And, and you know, you can, you can knock on the door. You can't bang down the door. With those topics, his father, he has to allow you in. And I... I always acknowledge that. I don't know what that's like. I mean, imagine that you're on the track. Your, your dad died in your rearview mirror at Daytona. A week later, he has to get back in the car because that's your job. Your dad would want you to do that. How could you possibly be all in getting in that car? And he's right. You know, if he's not Dale Earnhardt Jr., he gets fired. He had no success. He had an unbelievable fan base. Still has one. I mean, he's the most popular driver, and he doesn't drive anymore. But uh, season two, Lost Speedways on Peacock. Once again, my thanks to uh, Dale Jr.